Welcome to the world of solar water heating and significant energy savings on your power bill. I am John Wilson from Sunshine Solar and in the next few minutes I want to take you through the basic settings of the SR868 controller, how it works, the best settings and if you're the type of person who has trouble programming a DVD recorder, a simple guide on what to do. At the end of this presentation I'll also take you through a couple of potential problems and how to fix these. Again, congratulations on making the decision to go solar. By doing this, you're in the top 3% of energy savers in this country. You would have received a manual like this one with your controller. If you can please turn to page 10 and mark this page, it will be useful in understanding how the controller works. Before we look at that, let's have a look at the basic controller screen and we'll go through a couple of the buttons. Pull the flap down. By pressing any button, you'll activate the screen. On the left hand side we'll have a picture of the solar panel in the hot water cylinder and on the right hand side we'll have a temperature and a time. The buttons on here, there are very few of them. If we just start from the plus button, if we press the plus button it will tell you what T1 is. T1 is the temperature at the top of the manifold and you can see that that's flashing. Press the plus button again. T2, which is the bottom of your hot water cylinder, so that's where the cold comes into the hot water cylinder. And temperature 3 is the top of the hot water cylinder. So this is the temperature of hot water that you'll be getting out. You'll notice that the pump light here is flashing. That means the pump is activated. If we come through some of the rest of these buttons, we have a clock button. To change that, simply press the clock button. We'll see that the time is flashing on the hour. Just press the plus and minus to alter that. So for daylight saving example, you'll need to go up an hour or down an hour. So 13 o'clock, it's a 24 hour clock. 11 o'clock. To go into the minutes, press clock button. And a third function, if you turn on to the last one, it's days of the week. So at the moment it's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. To finish off, just simply press clock button again. The next button is the holiday button. Hold your finger down on this button for three seconds and a little palm tree will come up. So hopefully you're going somewhere nice. What this does is a couple of things. One is it keeps your element off because you don't want your element running while you're away. The second thing is at night time it will cool your system down. So when it's 20 degrees lower on the roof than it is in the bottom of your cylinder, it'll pump cold water around just to cool your system down as if you were using some hot water yourself. When you come back from holiday, just press the holiday button again and that will turn off. It will also manage your Legionnaire function just to make sure you don't get any bugs growing in the system. The last button along here is the heating button. We manage your element based on a timer function, but if you want to activate your element outside of that timer function, or if you want to manually activate it because you've got the power off, just press the heating button. It will flash up 60 degrees and says, do you want to heat the cylinder 50 degrees, 60 degrees, whatever. To adjust that again, just press the plus and minus. So we could say, please heat the cylinder to 50 degrees, 55 degrees. We'll leave it back at 60. So you'd use this function, for example, if you know it's a very cloudy day, and if you've done a lot of hot washing or had a lot of showers, and you know that the element's going to come on at 7 o'clock at night, but you say, it's not going to get any solar energy, I'll just press this button. After about 15 seconds, which seems like a long time when you're waiting for it, the element will come on. As you can see in the screen, that the little hand symbol up here, which says you've done it manually, and then in the bottom of the hot water cylinder here, the element symbol is flashing, which means we've turned the element on. This can be overridden by the ripple control or night rate or if you've got anything else. Um, so this tells you that you've put the heating on manually, and so when about three or four hours you should have hot water. To turn that off, just simply press the heating button again. You'll hear a little click of the relay coming on and off. Now let's go into the more substantial programming mode. To get into that, you press the set button. You'll notice on the screen you've got PWD and four zeros. The PWD stands for password. You'd use this function if you're in, say, a university hall where you don't want students playing with the numbers. So you can put in a password to stop anybody else programming your controller. If you notice on page 10 of your manual, it's under the set button, it says enter password. That is, we normally keep set at 0000. zero, zero. So let's just keep pressing the set to get past the zeros. 
And for example, you've made the password 001, this is how you'd enter it. Once you've got past all the zeros by pressing the set button, it comes up on the screen DT0. If you have a look on page 10, it says DT0 on the left hand side. If you follow that through, um, this is a menu of how to get there. If you want to know what each of these codes are, you come across to page 11, DT0, switch on temperature difference. And if you want to know more about the function, that's in the rest of the book. If you leave the controller for about five seconds, it will just revert back to uh, the existing programming. So let's get through that again. Through the password, DT0. DT0, according to the book, is switch on temperature difference. The set button, and that will tell you what figure that's at. We've got this set at 12 degrees. So that means when the roof is 12 degrees hotter than the bottom of your cylinder, there's enough energy for the sun to circulate and capture that energy. You can make that more or less. 12 degrees is a good average. If you've got a long distance between your hot water cylinder and your solar panel, you might make that up to 15. If your solar panel is right above your cylinder, you might go as low as 10. To go backwards, you can either press set, and that will keep that, or escape. To come across to DTF, which is the next thing on page 10 there, uh, you just simply press the plus button. That will take you along the menu tree. DTF is a difference in temperature finish. So that means 12 degrees difference will turn the element, uh, turn the pump on. And when you get down to a 5 degrees difference, that will turn the pump off. So the sun will heat that up to 12 degrees, come on. Once the hot water comes around, the cold goes through, it will turn it off. So that's 8 degrees. Um, again, you can make that lower or higher. For a solar cylinder where you've got pro pockets, you might make that as low as 4 degrees. For a retrofit cylinder where you're attaching, you'd make that up to 8 degrees. The next function along the menu is called timing heating. Press set button to get into that menu. This is timing heating one on. There are three time zones where you can switch your element on. So we've got the first time zone to switch the element on in, in, during the day at one o'clock in the morning. Press the set button to go into this. And we can see that the one o'clock is flashing. Again, you can make this earlier or later just by the plus and minus. The set button again does the minutes. And the third setting in the timing heating one is the temperature you want the element to come on. So if T3 is below 50 degrees, it will turn the element on. By pressing the plus button, once you're back there, is timing heating one finish. So we've got the element coming on at one o'clock in the morning and coming off at seven o'clock in the morning. Now this is still overridden by your thermostat in your hot water cylinder. Press the set button twice and we're heating it up to 60 degrees. So if you're below 50 degrees at T3, the element will come on and that will heat all the way up to 60 degrees um, up until six o'clock in the morning. Press escape to go back. So that's timing heating one finish. Timing heating two on. There's three time zones where we can put the element on. So we've got this on at 10 o'clock. And you'll notice we've also got it off, timing heating two finish at 10 o'clock. This means that it doesn't actually come on. And the third time frame, we've got timing heating three on at five o'clock at night. 50 degrees again until 11 o'clock at night. So that will take care of your nighttime showers. And we're back to timing heating one, just goes in a circle. Let's go escape and we'll get back to the next menu function. So we're up THET, come across the menu tree, and we get into the temperature menu. This is where most of your safety protections are. Then we come to the temp menu. Press the set button and we get into the protection systems in the controller. EMOUF, if you have a look at your manual, is the collector maximum switch off temperature. If the collector gets higher than this temperature, then we won't put any more water back into the system because we're trying to protect the, the valves and the fittings and, and the, no leaks in your system. If you leave it for more than five seconds, you'll always revert back to the system here. So let's get through again. Through the password by pressing the set button. DT0 press plus across the menu tree until we get to the temp menu, set again. So EMOF, maximum temperature of the collector. We don't want to bring hotter water than that back into our system. EMON, that's when it will switch back on. If the temperature on the collector gets below that, it'll pump around. 
CMX is a collector cooling function, so if you're up to 110 degrees or above that, then it will pump and stop, pump and stop to actually cool the system down, try and keep the temperature below that 130 on the roof. Um, the next relevant one is the CFR, which is your collector frost protection. When it gets frosty, you don't want your water to freeze on the roof. So we normally set that at uh, 2 degrees. If it does get below 2 degrees on the roof, we will take some cold water out of the bottom of your cylinder, pump that around and just take the chill off the cylinder. When that gets up to 5 degrees, it will stop and allow the outside air to cool that down. With the evacuated tube systems, we only make this 2 degrees because the water inside the manifold is extremely well protected. For a flat panel, or potentially if you've got it lifted up on a frame, we'll actually make that higher, maybe 4 degrees. Uh, so just extra protection from frost. But normally 2 degrees is your best option. The next option, if you have a look at uh, page number 11, is your maximum temperature of the tank. You can get rid of any of these items by pressing the set button. And you can see that it's gone to dash dash. So if you've got a wet back cylinder, a lot of those boil. So you can get up to 100 degrees plus in there. It just bubbles over in your roof, no problem. So that's taken that off. But normally, we leave that about 78 degrees. Uh, you, can, you can change it up to 80 degrees. This is the maximum temperature that you get to in your hot water cylinder. If you're up at 80 degrees, you're using less hot and more cold to get the same temperature out of the system. So it actually makes your cylinder act like a bigger cylinder, which is a good thing because it means you can handle more cloudy days in a row. We have another couple of functions in here which we generally don't use. That's the recalling function, which is off. Um, you can change it if you're American to Fahrenheit rather than Celsius. And back around the circle to the EMOF. We'll press the escape button and we'll get down to the next menu tree. A lot of these settings are the standard settings. You can change them. What a good idea is if you have a look at this book under the remark is put the settings that you've programmed in here. So for example if it's reset because of a power spike or something silly or someone plays with the system you can go back to your what your settings are. Now we'll come to the function menu. Again press the set button. This first part we don't normally use, it's the anti-legionella function. If you were using no heating on the system, then you'd turn this on, press set, and then press plus. That would turn that on. What this does is every 48 hours, it'll heat your whole cylinder up to 60 degrees to stop the bugs. But you don't need this with the programming that we're putting in. Escape to go back one, and plus. Again, this is another one that's not normally used. It's a circulation function. So let's just put it on and let's see what happens. It says 40 degrees on there. Again, you can change this up and up and down, and we'll go back and see what's happened to our screen. You notice now how there's another pump in the system. If you've got a hot water cylinder or a, a tap that's a long way from your hot water cylinder, and you want to be able to get some heat down there, so when you turn on the hot tap, there's always hot there, rather than waiting for the cold to come through the system. We'll run the circulation function. It requires an extra pump and an extra temperature monitor here. This system here is actually flashing at the moment because we haven't plugged in T4, which is this measurement here. But what would happen is you put a probe on the return line. If that gets below 40 degrees, then it will run the pump and keep hot water in the system. Let's turn that off because we're not using that at the moment. So again... Set through the passwords, through to the function menu, circulation menu, press that set button twice, that comes off. Escape. Uh, NMIN is the speed controller of the pump. So we can control that pump to run faster or slower depending on how much solar energy is up there. When the temperature on the roof gets that 12 degrees hotter than the bottom of the cylinder, we'll run at 30% speed of that pump. This is the minimum speed, but for every degree above that 12 degrees, the pump will pick up speed so that the solar energy won't take off if there's intense sun to the bottom of the cylinder. So 40, 50 degrees is the minimum, but normally it's set at 30 degrees. To get this running effectively, you need your pump to be running on speed number three, and I'll show you a bit about the pump a bit later. The only other one that we use really on this is the bypass function, and I'll set that and you'll see what happens with the graphic. 
So once the cylinder gets to 75 degrees, we're putting in this bypass. Let's see what the controller. You'll notice now that there's an R1 and a little symbol there, which is symbolic of a radiator. We can dump excess heat from the hot water cylinder to somewhere else. For example, a pool, uh, for example, a radiator, for example, just somewhere to dump the heat so your cylinder doesn't get too hot. Again, as you've got P1 flashing here for the temperature on the roof being hotter than the temperature at the bottom of the cylinder, when R1 is activated, that will flash and you'll see exactly the same thing. Um, this is extremely good for mains pressure systems where you've got a, a very large um, solar array. Or example, if you've got a wet back as well in your system and you want to dump that heat to maybe a fan convector or a radiator down the other end of the house. Let's get rid of that. Again, back through to the function menu, press the set button, through the bypass and double click to take that off. After the function menu, there's another couple of things in here. Uh, running things on manual or hand control, how to adjust the password, and a few other bits and pieces. But essentially that's everything you need to know about the hot water uh, controller. The recovery button, if you press that, that will go back to factory settings. So that's why it's good to actually write all your remarks in this column here. I'd just like to show you through a couple of the major features of the control system. First of all, we have the pump here. It's a bronze pump, so you don't get any rusting. And as I've said before, here's the th speeds on it. We've got speed 1, speed 2 and speed 3, which basically relate to the amount of power that's going to the pump. Please keep it on pump number 3 and let the speed controller on the controller run that. Uh, secondly, we have a non-return valve. There's a little arrow which I've made brighter with this black vivid. That shows you the flow of the hot water cylinder. If you haven't got one of these in your system, you're likely to thermosiphon at night time, which means things will cool down, you'll cool your system down. So make sure one of these is installed. Next we've got the thermocouples. These measure temperature. The grey one, this is for measuring the temperature in the hot water cylinder. The black one, this is for measuring the cylinder on the roof. It's essential that you get this for the roof and these for the hot water cylinder because they have different resistances. If you get them the wrong way around, you'll get bad measurement. The reason why we use different ones is for the failure mode. We want this to fail cold and we want this to fail hot for safety. And the last feature is the steam vent. This goes on your roof next to your manifold. This has a little float inside of it, so if you get air or steam in the system, the float will drop. We will allow the air and the steam to evaporate off the system here. So that keeps the air and the steam out of the system. If you've set your system to a maximum temperature in your cylinder of, say, 80 degrees, and your cylinder gets up to that temperature, we'll release the excess heat out of one of these. So don't be worried if you see steam coming out of that. That's meant to happen. If you've got a mains pressure system, that will more likely come through the cold water expansion valve uh, in the bottom of your cylinder.